right, hey everyone, wanted to answer some general questions that usually come up during the stream about myself, the stream, all that stuff. Uh, the number one question that I tend to get is, how did you come up with your name? We have Kung Fu Fruit Cup. So Kung Fu Fruit Cup is a high school inside joke. Like plain and simple, that's kind of the TLDR. I was doing like tech theater in high school. We were like building a set and took a dinner break and the set designer at dinner, he had wrapped like a piece of extra cloth around my head. And then when we got dinner, I had a little fruit cup on the side and he looked at me and he's like, what are you like a, like a Kung Fu fruit cup? And I don't know why, but that stuck with me. And I just decided that, um, I would use it for like a lot of online accounts and stuff. So it just happened to be the one I use on Twitch and we just kind of ran with it because I started to stream after I got to know some people in some communities and we went from there. And that's why I'm Kung Fu Fruit Cup. So another follow-up question that a lot of people tend to ask is, do you actually know Kung Fu? Well, if you heard the first part, it probably means no, <laughs> but it's really just, uh, I don't know Kung Fu. I like to say, I'm, you know, I'm like half Jedi because I do a lot of Beat Saber. And uh, I am a certified yoga teacher, so that's kind of the closest I get. But um, otherwise, just the fruit cup is the one that knows Kung Fu. So your name is Kung Fu Fruit Cup, but what do we actually call you? <laughs> At this point, after eight years, most people just refer to me as Fu because it's really short and simple and easy. But you can also use Kung Fu or Fu Fu. Those are the main actual nicknames people use for me now. How long have I been streaming? I've been streaming since April of 2014. It's a long time, it's like eight plus years now, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I streamed for a while. I went full-time within a year, which I think I was really fortunate to do. It was at a really good time when Twitch was exploding. I had like a really, really big growth surge at the time before it got really oversaturated. So it was a great time to get in and make partner and, and things like that. And so here we are all these years later, full-time streaming has been great. How long have I had my hair like this? So my hair has been this bright and colorful since I think late, 2018. Common question I get about my hair is, how do you keep it that bright? And the answer is you go to a really good salon. Literally a mix of red, orange, and yellow dyes together um, that was professionally done at a salon. And I only wash it like uh, once or twice a week. So every four to six days, depending on how it's doing. And I try to use lukewarm or cool water when I wash it because it helps retain the color better and then use, you know, good healthy shampoos and conditioners for it. You can do hair masks. I use, um, a conditioning spray that helps neutralize the pH levels in the hair because the dye is acidic and water is a lot less acidic. It's more like alkaline. So use a spray to help keep it on the more acidic side so that the color doesn't strip as quick. But yeah, it's kind of how that works. What made you choose fire colors for your hair? Well, I love being a redhead and I have for a really long time. I wanted to experiment more. So instead of just being one solid, like dark reddish auburny color, I um, wanted to like fade it up into a blonde to make it a cool ombre. And I had that for a little while. And then I saw somebody from my same stylist, one of her other clients had like a brighter version. And I was like, I love that, let's do that. Except even more. How often do I get my hair done? I just go to a salon um, every eight to 12 weeks, depending on how the color's doing. And I touch it up myself to an extent at home in between, like once or twice. So every couple of weeks, maybe once a month, I put some kind of color on it if I'm not going in myself. How did I get into speedrunning? So speedrunning is the thing that really brought me to Twitch. I was shown an old Seglemic speedrun from, you know, back in 2014. And I was like, what is this? You know, because it was like old Super Mario 64, 120 star speedrun. And it was amazing to me. I'd never seen anything like it actually. So I thought it was super awesome. Found out people did this all the time with games that I grew up playing as a kid. And I was like super, I'm a very nostalgic gamer. So I play a lot of games over and over. So I just looked up the people who can play these much better than I can and thought it was really cool and found out GDQ through that and then decided to go to my first GDQ. And then a couple months later decided to try my first speed run, which is Kirby 64. I would say that's my favorite. It's just, it's a really chill comfy speed run, honestly. It's not that intense. It doesn't really have many glitches and things. It's just, it's very fluid, it's fun. Do I have any tattoos? I do, and they're actually showing right now. There you go. So these two tattoos are based on two spells from the game Nino Kuni, which was uh, made in part with Studio Ghibli, which is, you know, one of my favorite animation studios. So we have Give Heart and Take Heart uh, on each wrist. 
which I think is like a fun little kind of like metaphorical thing. But yeah, would recommend that game. Really good RPG. What's my favorite game? It's really hard to pick, but the one that I always land on and tell people is Paper Mario and TTYD, The Thousand Year Door is a very close second. They're both so good, and I need to I need to replay TTYD because I just replayed Paper Mario recently. And regardless of when you see this video, that's probably still true. <laughs> you always mention GDQ. What is GDQ, and what is your role in it? Um, so GDQ means Games Done Quick, and that is an organization that focuses all about speedrunning. They do two large charity events a year. It's probably the biggest speedrunning events that you could find every year. One in the winter, one in the summer. And uh, those are week-long charity events benefiting either the Prevent Cancer Foundation in the winter or Doctors Without Borders in the summer. It's 24 hours a day for a week. And at this point, after being involved with them for a while, I am on the interview team. So I'm involved in the pre-show. I do interviews all throughout the week between the people at the charities and the people running the games and sometimes people on production. And we also do daily recaps, which is really fun as well as sometimes you'll see me actually hosting, which is like reading out donations and incentives and things like that during the speed runs and in between. I've also um, done a Beat Saber showcase for an actual game during the marathon before, which was really fun. That was in January of 2021. And I host a GDQ Hotfix show, which is the shows that you could see online weekly, like weekday shows. I have a show every other Monday. At the moment, it's called That's Never Happened Before, and it's all based on having people come in and explain the glitches involved in glitch heavy speedruns, which is awesome. What was the first game I streamed on Twitch? Uh, technically, it was Banjo-Kazooie, but that was like a test stream. So I say my first official stream was Paper Mario. What games do you usually play for stream? I usually play games that are like RPGs, a ton of Nintendo games. I am a Nintendo influencer, so I play a lot of their games, but that's because I love it. I was the one who kind of like walked up to their booth incessantly until they were like, okay, fine, you can join the partner program. Uh, <laughs> I believe that's how it worked. I can't say for sure, but that's like my theory. So a lot of Nintendo games, RPGs, adventure games, platformers, a lot of retro things. And uh, we also do some movement based games like Beat Saber is a really big thing on this channel. I used to do a lot of Just Dance, Ring Fit Adventure. And uh, sometimes we do creative stuff like cooking streams and like building Legos and things like that. And it's all really fun. Or board game streams, all fun stuff. Do I play games off stream often? Um, not as much as I would like to. Uh, if I have nights off, maybe I'll play a little bit of Minecraft. If I'm out and about, maybe I'll do a little Pokemon Go. I don't do a lot of story-based games off stream because I want to save that for on-stream content. So yeah, I really don't have a lot of time to do games off stream, which is, it's weird. It's like a casual activity that you would normally do. Isn't really that casual for me, but I still try to treat it that way. Did you have voice acting classes uh, when I was younger? Um, I did a little bit of voice lessons. Um, I did a couple months on and off, like twice, but that was about it. I did chorus in eighth grade, and I did the musicals in high school, and I loved acting. Um, otherwise, it's been pretty self-taught in terms of singing, but it's fun. It's fun. I know I'm not the best at it, but I really enjoy it. Favorite Disney movie? <sighs> My favorite... 2D animated Disney film is probably The Lion King. My favorite 3D animated Disney film is probably Tangled. My favorite Pixar film is Up. And my favorite Disney released film that Disney didn't make directly <laughs> Spirited Away. <laughs> so I have multiple answers for that. All right, Foo, what's with the pun tags? Puns are here and exist on this world to hurt other people. Um, they make you cringe and groan and roll your eyes. And I believe those are all signs of negative emotions. And so you got to pay. You got to you got to you got to do your time or pay for your crime. OK, and that's it. Are all the pets you see on my stream mine? Uh, no. So years ago, I did have a bunny who is still kind of the mascot of my stream. Loved her a lot. Her name was Baldwin. She was awesome. But nowadays, you just see um, my uh, neighbor kind of housemate, sort of. <laughs> we live next to each other. It's connected. Um, her pets kind of roam around on the stream where they see the cat or one of the dogs. But I don't have a pet at the moment. Uh, maybe down the road, I will have one. And you'll watch this video after I've gotten my own puppy. But uh, at the moment, they are not my pets, but they do like to hang out up here. <laughs> Is this a G-rated stream? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't play a lot of games that are super heavy in terms of gore 
violence, sexual content, things like that often. Sometimes, you know, in like a horror game, you'll see something or I've done like Conker's Bad for a Day, but uh, usually my content's pretty light, but we swear in here. There's some swear, there's some curse words going on. <laughs> what equipment do I use for my stream? Oh, a lot. I'm a little extra when it comes to my stream setup, but you can see pictures and information about um, my equipment and some of my PC specs on my website at kungfufrucup.com. Just go to the stream page and scroll down, or you can use a command in my Twitch channel that should be exclamation specs, I believe, and that should take you there as well. Because there's a lot, there's really a lot to go over. I use things like a Go XLR, a Stream Deck XL. I have multiple monitors, multiple PCs, good mic and camera. There's a lot that goes into this setup. All right, everyone. Well, hopefully that helped answer some of your questions, general questions about the stream. Uh, feel free to tune in and watch if you'd like to know more. You can always come in with more questions or post any questions down below if you'd like to hear some more stuff. I um, will be also having some other videos that I will link when they're all done about more about Game Sun Quick or more about Beat Saber, more about what being a streamer is like. But this is all about answering your general questions about the stream. Hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll see you next time.